Welcome to part three of our 2022 regular season Mets grades. It is now time for starting pitchers. Let's go. Now, as for our starting options, it is definitely as far as our one-two punch can take us. We've had our dust-ups, we've had our injuries throughout it, but it's definitely held up pretty good overall. Put a lot of money and resources, and we're going to see if it was worth it, or did we just waste a lot of money for a uh, elite rotation just to fall flat and collapse in the second half? We'll see. <laughs> There's absolutely no resentment, and we're definitely not recording this right after we just lost our second in the row to the Braves. Absolutely not. You know, we got a guy paying $45 million, another guy that's going to want $50 million, and then another guy that probably wants north of 19 to $20 million. We'll, we'll to be determined if he's going to deserve it. You know, playing against the biggest series of the year, maybe because the offense still sucks. But, you know, when you're giving up absolute piss missiles to a team that hits a lot of piss missiles, leaning fastballs over the middle of the plate, and they're getting hit 445 feet, maybe we're just a little bit upset. That's not going to take all of the into considerations of the grades. So let's start it off, Tub Tub. So with that being said, we got our anchor out. Now, let's get to the grades. We're going to start with Carlos Carrasco. He's a seasoned vet, currently starting to show his age, and that's what we've kind of seen up and down throughout this season. What do you think of Carlos Carrasco? Uh, big stretch, big games. Uh, he has pitched well, but did pitch well for a good couple months stretch in like June and July before he got injured. He was capable number four starter. He didn't go for re uh, rehab assignment and did not look good and has not looked good, has not gotten deep, and has been hit hard. So again, I gave him a D. You're starting to see the age come catch up to him. You have a vesting option. So, you know, you got $11 million attached to this guy's name. Are you going to be in the future plans for next year? I went with a D plus for Carlos Carrasco. I think for a good stretch, he looked like he was having a good bounce back season. Looks like he's just hit a wall ever since he came back from his injury. I didn't like the fact that he did not take a rehab assignment, mainly because he has had a lot of lower body injuries recently. And also he is 35 years old. The age is really just starting to catch up with him and there's not really much lights out I really expect from him but if he can be a solid number four in the playoffs all of that would be erased but after how he has been pitching recently it's hard to say if he will get that job either way Carrasco is a easy guy to root for he's such a nice guy and I'm hoping that he does have success but again it's definitely going to be a question mark for his future if he does not show up in the postseason with the postseason experience that he has now we go to the dominantly number three in the rotation, Chris Bassett. Acquired during the offseason from the A's for two minor league pitchers. 162 games later, how do you feel about Chris Bassett? Pitched pretty well throughout going down the stretch. Uh, he hasn't uh, had an outing where I want to kill him. So I gave him a B plus. He's been a very, you know, obviously besides that one stretch where he just for some reason just got out of funk and just, but ever since that, you know, weird stretch, he's pitched phenomenally. You know, he's been in innings either going seven, eight, whenever he can. There was times he was flirting going with a complete game, but obviously Bucks always takes him out. Expect him back, but if he has a good postseason run and, you know, maybe actually shows up when his team needs him to do and throw shut up ball. Uh, maybe he opt out to try to get more money in the offseason. Maybe he'll get paid. Maybe. Who knows? Bassett has been one of my favorite pitchers in the league for a long time, and I think Mets fans are starting to see why. The man's a workhorse. He's always guaranteed to at least push to seven, maybe even eight. He gives you your innings, and he's been one of the most reliable arms out of all of our starting pitchers from game one all the way to game 162. He's a extremely reliable number three on a World Series team, and that's what he has been for this entire season. He loves to pitch. He just wants to throw. He's got great stuff. He's great at managing contact. I gave him an A. I think he's definitely done the job as the number three starter in this rotation, and obviously I'm a huge fan of Chris Bassett, and I think he's going to be one of the most important, if not the most underrated piece to this roster in the postseason if we make a deep run. Now that brings us to a man of controversy, I would say, 
in David Peterson. He's a lefty. Now he is in the bullpen. He was in the rotation, getting some spot starts. Uh, we have been on the stance. The dude sucks. He just can't do anything right. I gave him a D minus. Uh, he's pitched ball decently a few times, but again, we both don't like him. We both just want him on the first trip out of here. I've been put into a lot of controversy with this guy, and you know, I've gotten a lot of hate for what I've said, but he's just inconsistent. Like you just can't really find a median with this guy. Walks the ballpark. He's an absolute head case on the mound. And to be honest, I want to apologize for saying that he's a reliever. He's not a reliever. He's actually just not that good. I don't really think that this guy is a future piece to this team. He's someone I do not trust at all in that rotation or actually coming out of the bullpen at all. If people need to go out of their way to tell me that he is so good and at the top of his game, maybe he's just not that good. Let's get to a sore subject, I'd say, currently for Mets fans. He's kind of hit a bit of a wall recently, and we just made a video about the concerns around him. How do we feel about Jacob deGrom? I know it's kind of a sore subject recently, but overall, how do you feel? Obviously, uh, the go, the man, the man that wants to be paid in the offseason, who wants $50 million, supposedly told that he's this big game pitcher. Yeah, we didn't see that. And uh, getting bombed by the ace. And then we're starting to see a little trend, which isn't good to see, that he's turning into a Tampa Bay Rays pitcher, where he's dominant through the first two times through the order. And then the third time's through, this man just turns into Blake Snell. Keep the ball in the ballpark. I gave him a B. Well, I'm going to be a more gentler because I'm I'm a huge fan of Jacob deGrom. I love deGrom. I've loved him ever since he was called up. We went more into depth with this situation in a previous video earlier this week. But as for Jacob deGrom now, I gave him an A only because I know he's better than that. I know that he is going to snap out of whatever he is currently in. We haven't seen a tough stretch from him before. Last time we saw this was probably back in 2019. And then he went on a huge Cy Young run to get his back-to-back -back Cy Young. I know he's better than this. I know that he is going to be better than this. Is there some adjustments that he needs to make right now for the playoffs? Absolutely. Do I trust that he will? Absolutely. And I know he's going to prove that he deserves that 45 to 50 million because he is the best pitcher in baseball. And he is until proven otherwise. Now let's get to an arm that we just saw once in a game. But he could play a role in the future, considering how many free agents that we do have from this pitching staff, and that is Jose Budo. Came up to make a spot start in place of Taiwan Walker in Philly. How do you feel about Jose Budo right now and for the future? It's an F if we're just talking strictly MLB. He did go back down to AAA, which obviously he got called up like baby with triple a like like one start and hey kid you're up to the big leagues citizens bank park go have fun and once he got back down he won international pitcher of the month he does have an elite changeup that is his go-to pitch we'll see what else develops again he's not an ace he's, he's not going to be you know jake matt harvey level of oh this is no he's a colin McHugh level of hey he can give you some spot starts when he's actually mlb ready if we're just talking strictly just mlb time it's an f it has to be but maybe some brighter days in the future but we'll see this is one of those situations where i'm just gonna go neutral and give him a c because i just haven't seen much aside from the missed spots to alec bohm he didn't pitch that bad he definitely showed a little promise in his breaking stuff and off speed stuff i definitely think that he needs a better fastball and needs to be a good weapon whether it is out of the bullpen or maybe making a spot start here and there I do like him. I'm not extremely high on him, but I do expect him to have somewhat of a role in the future. He just needs to fix some minor mistakes. And as we've seen in AAA, which he didn't really get much experience before he was called up in emergency, he's pitched very well. Now let's get to Max Scherzer, the big acquisition this offseason. Now game 162. Let's keep the recency bias aside. How do you feel about Max Scherzer? I gave him an A. Just the injury, the, the oblique, you know, missing time with that obviously sucks. But again, he's been what you've paid for against everybody else, except, you know, when we really need him to show up, he was just getting absolutely bombed. So, little psycho. We'll see you in the wild card series, bud. We are absolutely not bitter 
at all right now. I also gave Max Scherzer an A, what he's done for this team, the kind of transformation of this clubhouse compared to last year has definitely been great and it's definitely been a great addition. Overall pitching performance, he's been that ace level talent that he's been for a long time and we all know that he's a future first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm definitely excited to see what he does in the playoffs. He's one of those few guys that lives for the pressure and I cannot wait to see it. Definitely got a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth from tonight's game as we're currently recording this, but I'm not going to fully penalize him for the great season that he has had at 38 years old. Still shoving looks better as he gets older. Second to last starter on this list, Taiwan Walker. I'll just push it over to you. Have fun. The Oh my god, I'm sick and tired of seeing this dude. I get it. It's great in the first half. We all know the story. The guy did it last year. He's done it again, again this year. Completely falling apart. Getting absolutely bombed by literally everybody. But dominance the Miami Marlins. Please opt out and please get off my team. Go anywhere. Just get off my team. I'm sick and tired of just seeing him and it's complaining if he has a bad start. Oh, it's my finger. Oh, it's my foot. Oh, it's my back. Oh, it's my abdomen. My appendix blew. I don't care. I've had my time with Taiwan Walk. You're going to have great success with your taco stand. Everyone loves the tacos. Just go do that because you're way better at that than you are throwing a base. I gave him a D minus because he was better than he was last year in the second half. That's the only thing keeping me from giving him an F. I'm tired of him too. I've had enough. I want him to go. I just don't think that this guy is actually serious about being on a major league mound every five days. The overall talent that the guy has, he's just not that good. And you just don't know if he's going to blow up or not. For someone who is a highly anticipated prospect, it's extremely underwhelming how bad this guy is. And I really cannot take another year of this. I'm really hoping that he opts out. But knowing our luck, we'll probably be stuck with him for another year. Or maybe we'll try and trade him. But I am not confident in this guy going into the playoffs. I am just not confident with this guy on the mound. I don't like watching him pitch. I am tired of having this guy on my baseball team. I've had enough of Taiwan Walker. <laughs> What? And the saddest part is, if we even beat the Padres, he's our cake one star against the Dodgers. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. You gotta love being a wild card team and not taking care of business and then you get to play the Dodgers. And finally, that brings us to probably the most important arm on this staff throughout the starting rotation and also the bullpen, Trevor Williams. He's been so important to this team all year. He's cleaned up so many message. He showed so much versatility of a guy who can come out of the bullpen. He's ready for anything. Pitch great to get to be a plus, but I, he looks like Jared Leto, and I just watched Morbius the other day, and that movie f***ing sucks, so can't really say much else. Look, he pitched great. I hope you bring him back. Good swing, man. I also gave him a B plus. I think he has been fantastic for us overall this season. I think he's going to be one of the most underrated arms on the free agent market because there's going to be competitive teams out there that want a guy like this who can play in any sort of role out of the bullpen in a spot start. This guy has been the Iron Man all year. He throws strikes. He knows how to manage contact. He has fantastic command of the zone. He's not perfect, but he's quality. And that's what I like. I wish the Mets added a little bit more of this type of player at the deadline. But here we are. Trevor Williams has definitely been a huge part to this team. I and mean, hopefully next time this year, we actually put the money to guys who could actually pitch in September and make pitch big games. And when Otani and, you know, maybe Corbin Burns is in the three and the fourth spot in this rotation. Maybe they're two and the threes. Maybe we just let Jacob DeGrom walk if he's just going to choke in big games. Once again, there is absolutely no salt coming from the last two games against the Braves absolutely none no salt at all nothing but happiness and gumdrops in Metsland.